Hey, so with my results, um, as far as comfort level goes, um, results for this company like this are kind of open-ended uh, for the most part. Just there's a lot of wiggle room for valuation, it seems like, depending on how you choose to value it. So I'm fairly comfortable not putting too narrow of a range uh, on Slack's price range, um, but I do think the prices that we laid out um, in this project do kind of put a good working range for where the stock could move, um, especially in the shorter term. Um, I think my comfort level starts to dissipate a little bit when we look at longer term, um, just because what we probably need to look at modifying the model uh, to kind of look at increasing competition um, and eventually a tapering off in added users and added business. Um, some other factors like that. Um, so kind of looking at the um, valuation method and concerns associated with that, um, I think one of my biggest concerns is uh, using a linear increase in price sales ratio. Um, just the simple fact that this ratio can't keep going up over time. Um, so the farther out we're projecting, yeah, the more that's kind of true for that method. Um, I would also, even in the short term, like to look at things like debt to cash um, and other metrics to kind of get a sense of how well management is positioning this company right now um, in comparison to management of the other comparables. Um, so another, another concern um, is the range of comparable firms. Um, just kind of looking at current value calculations, um, wondering if the high-end outlier Zoom should be removed or not. Um, again, that kind of depends on how we're valuing this firm, but that might bring the price range more into where it should be in the near term. Um, so kind of, kind of looking at how we identify the firms here, um, I was trying to key in on subscription-based tech communication companies um, that target services uh, to workplace environments. Um, so I was trying to, trying to go after companies that are either pure plays in this type of service space or have a relatively narrow range of uh, services, fast growing tech services, um, mainly for business. So not looking for ones that are well diversified like Microsoft, uh, WebEx's uh, parent company, Cisco, um, and, and even Alphabet and some of those other big companies that offer similar services. So trying to stay on more of the pure play side, that type of service. Um, to get comparable uh, valuations there. Um, so looking at the sensitivity analysis, um, did simple uh, outlier removals, look at the findings, um, you know, taking box out, moves the share price down a little bit, but not near as drastically as taking zoom out, you know, um, really, uh, sorry, taking box out, takes the share price up a notch, but taking zoom out really brings it down into more of the $21 range versus that $35 range. So that, again, is kind of reflective of how we're valuing this company. So if we're valuing it more as like an established business software servicing company, obviously that's gonna take out that growth component, price sales ratio, that's, those are gonna be brought down to earth quite a bit if, if the market's looking at it as that kind of type of company. Uh, if we're valuing it as more like a, a mega growth company, um, especially a mega growth company that's in a rapidly changing environment that is in its favor, much like Zoom is right now uh, with the pandemic and rapid uh, adaptation and adoption of that in the market, then that's really going to drive um, that ratio up and um, all other valuation factors up. So the growth component is going to go up. So its price is going to be potentially driven sky high. Um, so it just kind of depends on how we're identifying this company and how we're identifying um, its future. So that's sensitivity analysis is really kind of opening up that discussion.